Hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome to this video on Lexico graphic preferences. Um, let's just jump right into it. So starting from our definition here, we say X is lexicographically preferred to Y. If X one, right, which is the amount of good one in uh, bundle X is greater than that in bundle Y, or the amounts of good one is the same in each one, but if for good two, right, in bundle X, that's greater than or equal to y2 here right the amount of good two there so um the way we can practically think about this is in terms of say a kid that's going and choosing between uh different items at the pizza store right and he wants to just have pizza right he wants to get as the dish with the must most pizza there and then he'll look for other things from his order like vegetables so x1 in this context we could say is pizza and uh x2 in this context is uh I guess something else other goods so one of the things that i found um confusing about this definition first was that we have this here but then we have this x1 and y1 we have to note that these are bundles right that means that they are groups of goods and they have different amounts of them in them so in this video we're going to go through three things we're going to go and ask is this lexicographic preference relation rational we're going to prove this mathematically um, does our lexicographic preference relation have a utility representation we're going to also prove that so and for number three right and this is going to be saved for the very end we're going to ask what do these visually look like and what do they really seem like uh, if we were to go and think about them from a visual perspective so first starting out we're going to go and ask is or lexicographic preference relation rational and this is just asking if it's complete and transitive so to go and be talking about transitivity right we have to have three goods here um, so we're just going to go and write down these lexic orders for each one of these here and we have these definitions which are congruent with how we've defined our lexicographic preference relations but we're going to go and call these each different properties right we're gonna have property one property two property three and property four and from these properties we actually go and derive uh, some key results so from properties uh, one to three right or properties one and three and one and four um, we go and we find out the that is transitive and we derive this strict lexic ordering so I call this thing here a strict ordering or the strict part um, and this second part down here right for this lexicographic preferences this just goes and completes our definition uh, for our lexicographic preferences over here so we can see that first uh, it is complete right because we can make a comparison between X to y and x to z or any one of these bundles to each other directly by just going and looking at one of these properties or a combination of them together so we're now going to move on to our second question which is does our lexicographic preference relation have a utility function representation and the answer to that is a big fat no that's a big old no and the proof for this is that we're going to use proof by contradiction contradiction we're going to suppose that one exists right that means our lexicographic ordering between x and y has a parallel utility function uh, for all x and y in r here so we note that um, x1 is going to be lexicographically preferred to x0 so you might be confused thinking that hey um this is you know a two by two case here but remember x is a vector of some sort or some sort of list right here and we're going to say that if this holds we're going to have u of x and one being greater than u of x and zero right remembering that u is a mapping from uh, R n to R here. So 
the way that we're going to go and knock out this idea that there may be a utility function is by using this here. Like this is this is our secret weapon. Um, we're going to use this thing called the Archimedean principle, and that just states. Whoops, just messed that up here. But that just states that whenever there is a a and b in our in a set of real numbers where a is greater than b, that implies there exists some r, right? Which we're going to call a rational number such that between a and b r is going to be there so a is going to be greater than r but r is going to be greater than b so pull it putting that into our utility function because our utility function is a mapping from rn to the reals we're going to go and have our x here now we're going to suppose that x here is preferred to y right or it is uh lexicographically preferred to y here now we have this set up right down here as follows. In the form of our utility function representation, we would go and have the following. So this could just be, you know, u of x1, u of x0, u of y1 and y0 here, but we're going and putting in the middle here their respective r's, right? There's nothing wrong in saying that because that just follows from our Archimedean principle. If we were to go and take this and convert this back, meaning what do these utility functions represent? That this cardinal number that goes and comes out represents the ordinality of these preferences. We go and say that X being lexicographically preferred to Y implies that RX is greater than RY. However, this is a big problem because it is a mapping from the rationals to the reals or from the reals to the rationals. Sorry about that. Um, and that's impossible. And that's because this is non-countable. And Q here is countable, right? Thus, we go and say that our lexicographic preference has no utility function here. So let's talk about what these look like. Let's just go and erase that over there, get rid of it. Um, so remember, our definition of our lexicographic preferences is as follows. So we have x1 has to be greater than y1, meaning the amount of good 1 in bundle x is greater than that in bundle y, or x1 is equal to y1 and uh, x2 is greater than or equal to y2. Now, the, our utility functions, or we're not, well, there's no utility function here, but uh, our levels of utility are going to be singletons here. They're going to be just points here. And these are all going to be unique levels of utility in this context. Um, if we think about this, you know, from a little bit more of a criterion sort of uh, perspective, we go and we have the following. We have uh, this here as our primary criterion, meaning that if we have x greater than 1, then y1, sorry, uh, we would go and have that bundle preferred. But if we have x1 equal to y1, our secondary criterion goes and kicks in where we go and we proceed along this axis. So for a, a given point over here, right, improvements are primarily made out by going this way along our good one axis. However, if we're able to go and hold X one fixed, right? Our improvements are able to go out this way. Now, this is probably, you know, not the most satisfying graph. And if you don't really have a clear picture of this, uh, this is because there's no utility function and all of these uh, levels of utility are just going to be points here. So um, I hope this video was uh, you know, very comprehensive and I hope I was able to go and give you everything you need to know about this lexic ordering of preferences. Uh, I hope this video helps. Take care.